welcome to my channel. Well, of course, I got another Bowie knife. Uh, this one's a Rough Rider. It's the knife itself is made in China, not Pakistan, which is different for some of these knives. Um, here's the box that it came in. It's just a cardboard box with a pretty good, uh, you know, picture of rattlesnake over here. And it says, a traditional buoy with snakeskin blade. Every Sidewinder buoy blade is hand-dipped with a custom snakeskin finish. I thought it was like a decal, but apparently it's hand-dipped. Uh, here's your model number, RR1601. I looked it up earlier for the year of manufacture, but anyway, on the uh, on the Brockman list or whatever that I used to uh, figure out what year these models are and all this other stuff, it showed that uh, this was the only one of the series. They didn't make a Sidewinder, you know, everything else. It was the Bowie knife. What I like about this, besides, you know, I know this is going to come off. You can see it's, you know, they did it everywhere. They, they did it on the tang and everything. <clears throat> a very good blade edge. I mean, this is a, this is etched in. This isn't a decal of a rattlesnake here. That, that's pretty cool. I like that. The first thing that I noticed on this that's not apparent just from looking at it is this is very square. This is very blocky. Compared to, sorry, bumping everything. Here's the wild turkey buoy. All right, look how that that is contoured. It may not look like much, but that makes such a huge difference. This feels so, it's thick, but it feels good in hand. I mean, it feels ran, round. It, it fits your contours of your hand, you know. If you're a human, if you're a dinosaur or any other kind of creature, you might have a problem. Oops, sorry, I'm just trying to put this blade back in. I've learned from experience you don't want buoys hanging out exposed, if you can help it. See also rounding here. This roundness is something that, this one fits my hand even better because it's smaller. Some people with larger hands might have an issue because this gap is so small on, on the case one. For me, it fits perfectly. I've got room for four fingers and then a little bit more. <clears throat> this one's longer. And people with large hands are going to have no problem getting their hand up there. But like I said, it's square. Now uh, that can be fixed. You know, I'm gonna gonna try to round this up off enough and. Try not to get into the... But right here, you can feel a, a blocky edge. Other than that, <clears throat> buoy knives are one of those things where... You talk about going down a rabbit hole. See, that was a buoy knife hitting the floor. That was the case going after my feet, but I had my feet up on the chair. <laughs> Tried to get me, didn't you? All right, you guys sit over there. Right. Now, this piece right here. You talk about controversy and a lot of opinion, opinions and everything else. Some people tend to think that it was designed, you know, th this was actually used on old Bowie knives. You'll see a lot of them, they'll have this added on there. Now, why would they add, you know, brass on top of that? Uh, it's basically... The theory is it's going to, here again, potentially trap a blade, you know, because steel going into brass, brass is softer, so there's a tendency to slow it down. It's not going to be like going into butter, you know, or clay and just stopping it, you know. Um, the other thing is this is a lot of times when they temper a blade, they'll make the edge harden and the spine softer. And the softer spine is designed so that it'll uh, withstand blows. 
So again, you know, this might protect the blade, you know, somebody is hitting it with another one. All this is not scientific, uh, fully scientific research and everything. I went through several different threads and forums trying to figure out what people thought about this brass piece that was on top of the blade. And like I said, once again, I'm no expert. I'm just reading what I was reading. Um, my thoughts are that there's basically two kinds of of um, buoy knives that you'll see out there. Ones that are that were designed, you know, as fighting knives. They weren't designed for the, yeah, they can chop, but they weren't designed to chop down logs and trees and fence posts and all that other stuff. It was designed to go up against humans. Humans are made of flesh and bone. So that's the difference between um, those type of knives. And then the Bowie knife got, got hit by marketing, I think, you know. It started off with a legend and people, I'm sure the original one probably didn't have a cross guard and they found out, hey, you know, Cross guard might come in handy, not only to protect your hand, but to keep your hand from going forward on the blade and everything. So it just basically is, uh, I think, the Bowie knife was subjected to hype. It took Spanish influences. A lot of them were made in England, you know, in Sheffield, England, and shipped over here. And then some of the ones, like the Western ones, they didn't, you know want to face up with all the import fees and stuff and started making their own. And uh, from what I've heard, the, sometimes the Bowie knife was called the, the breaker of other blades, you know. So people started over-engineering them and getting them tough and everything. But a really thick blade, yeah, it's strong, but it's not going to usually cut as well as a thin blade. If you look at, you know, butcher knives and stuff, they don't make them because they're not, they're not going up against other knives. So this this uh, brass piece back here, I got it mainly. I got this knife mainly for its looks. All right, I I like I like the the blade etch right here, or I mean, it, you know, the engraving that they did right here on the handle. It's not the blade. And then this stuff I know is just gonna flake off, but it looks kind of cool while it's there, you know. But yeah, it's just gonna peel. It's gonna peel right off because you can, you can see uh, how it did it right there. That's just there's like a, a white layer, and then there's these flecks and stuff. It's strange that they didn't uh, etch the blade number in there. They just put it on the on the writing there and everything. But this does look like a rattlesnake. <laughs> It does look, and it is impressive. It's an impressive looker. So if I modify this thing at all, all I'm going to do is take some of these sharp edges off. It's going to basically sand it down so it's not so blocky. But other than that, I think it's a pretty cool blade. You know? It looks pretty cool. Just sitting there and just looks. And it's got a, it's got a, a good bevel on it. Let's cut something with it. Paper. Here, paper. Here, paper. I'm just going to jab some paper with it. See what it does. That's all right. That's not bad. Comes with a fairly sharp edge. See, a lot of them, they just, they just start switching them over. It's, they start transitioning from a fighting knife to more like a chopper. You know, they, they thicken the blade up to get it real heavy. And this kind of looks like the Western 49 or, you know, a, a combination of like the, the V44 kind of design look. The difference is, you know, this has a black, you know, straight, straight guards there and everything. And this one has the S guard. But they have the same handle shape. They have the similar you know, type of blade shape and everything of a Bowie knife. So yeah, there's a lot of controversy on Bowie's. There's a lot of opinions and ideas and and stuff like that. And and the original Bowie knife was more like a old hickory, you know, old hickory butcher knife. 
and it got modified from there and the legend hap you know occurred and everything and then uh, the alamo got involved and all this other stuff and now this particular sheath right here because of this brass thing and this plastic insert a lot of times i have to squeeze the mouth right here just to help it go in and it feels like it's trying to hit something but it gets all the way in here this is just um, simulated leather slather <laughs> i don't know if it's pleather simulated leather pretty good uh you know for a sheath it's got the little rivets nicely done all along and then you got a little loop here for you to put uh, a, a leg tie down if you want it fairly you know decent dangler not badly done and because it's the same size as the case knife i could carry the case knife in this sheath if i wanted to um yeah i, I think it's a a pretty good design i think this knife was about 25 dollars and i got it i was going to get it off ebay i was going to pay more money and I, then I just happened to search Chicago Knife Works, and they had it. They still have them in stock. And like I said, my only, my only uh, complaint about this one, if it's a complaint, is the handle feels blocky. I mean, you know, you can still use it. It's not, it's not a hot spot. It's just that you feel it. You know, if you, if the difference between a knife that feels good in hand and one that doesn't sometimes it's just a matter of ergonomics you know i mean kind of self-explanatory there you know the more contoured and the less square this is the more it molds with your hand which is round you know we were robots and we had square palms didn't f flex as much as that we might like that other than that this is an excellent little knife here. You know, yes, if you start using it, the stuff is going to peel off. You know, it's it's like a, it's like paint in a decal. Now, another thing, I, this is not listed in Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Smoky Mountain Knife Works would, uh, would give you a better description of this. All that is listed as this steel is that it's stainless. That's all we know. Stainless steel, that's all I can tell you. Probably 440A would be my guess. But 440 or 400 series stainless steel. A little choil here if you wanted to get dangerous, you know, get up there. You got that. You're not going to get cut. Um, I might file a little some of these edges down. Like I said, there's just a, a few little sharp places here that Nothing will cut you. It's just a matter of feel. But again, I, I just love that striking rattlesnake. You know, he's he's ready to he's ready to get somebody. And then the the pattern looks pretty good. You know, on this and the brass thing. This would protect it. You know, if you were doing a lot of batoning and everything, you'd be beating on the brass. But yeah. There you go. That's that's my look at the uh, Rough Rider Sidewinder buoy. It's a pretty good one. I like I like the way it feels. It's not too heavy. I'll have to weigh it for you. Um, but yeah, non sharpened swedge up here. Again, if you were going to use one of these for fighting and stuff like this, most of them would sharpen this swedge up here, so you could have what's known as the back cut. You know, where you don't have to change the direction of the stuff you can just cut with this end too or if it goes into like internal organs you know it can do a slash yeah that's pretty gory a lot of this stuff hand-to-hand -hand knife fighting is is super rare nowadays most of the time there's only one knife the person with the knife uh stabs the other person the person that got stabbed doesn't always know they were stabbed you know, adrenaline depends on how far it penetrated and what you hit and everything. But yeah, a lot of people, a lot of times, people get stabbed multiple times. So yeah, the the idea of you know two people going off one on one with a knife, uh, 
it probably didn't happen a whole lot. I mean, there were duels and everything. Texas even made it a against the law. It's only recently, but back in the 1800s, Texas had it on the books that if you used a Bowie knife, you were guilty, no matter what the circumstances were. You know, you were going to be, you were guilty because you used a Bowie knife. I mean, it had that kind of a reputation. They were wanting to stop people from getting into duels and cutting each other up and everything. So they basically, the place where it became famous only recently has allowed people to start carrying these again. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure. See, it's got that, it's got that sheath. Like I said, there's something going on here that makes it, doesn't just fall out of the sheath. Look at the weight of that thing. And no snap on it. So it's got a good friction fit on there. And the strap is done on the opposite side of the blade. So all in all, I'd say, you know, and this is not just flimsy. This is thick, you know, like webbing type of nylon. Some of those, you know, they'll just give you, it's like a double, it's been doubled back on it. So some of them just give you a little thin strap of uh, nylon up there to hold something. And uh, that's to where the weight of all your my this is what attaches your knife to you you know if it's something flimsy uh, it's like they say the chain the chain is only strongest at its weakest point all right we got the mouth open here sidewinder yeah a sidewinder rattlesnake is different he he goes through the if you've ever seen him in the desert they they go at an angle a lot of times when they're moving, they're not, they're not moving straight up. They're they're side winding. So it's a different type of rattlesnake. There you go. And it's this is comparison compared to a T Rex. It's about the size. I'll try to put the weights and everything in the end. So there you go. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.